All right, right here on the second of April. I've got a little innovation here on my work wagon that I'm trying to come up with. And that is that we often need the larger loppers, the friskars as they call them. And I want to carry it on my, sometimes we don't like to carry the big work wagon because the work wagon uh, is difficult to maneuver around and sometimes we just like to carry the wagon uh, I mean the four-wheeler and I'm trying to come up with a way to uh, carry my pruning shears here safely That's going to work right there. That's going to have them. Of course, we could catch them on something down here, but if we turned it the other way, and it's going to have to be, if we turn it the other way, it's going to be a danger here of getting stuck. All right, we're going to see how this works. I've been carrying them in the box, but um, we put the pruning, pruning, box in there we put corn in there and different things all right that's our first little thing that we're doing this morning and uh now we're going to head on down and do a few more chores all right we uh, we haven't gotten going yet but something here i guess most people have enough sense to do this but we always keep wire tied to the back of the four-wheeler there's innumerable ways that you need wire as you're going around doing your daily chores. This is a galvanized electric fence wire is what it is. And we also have sometimes, don't have it right now, but we also have some uh, aluminum wire. That would be light gauge electric fence wire. And that's a very easy soft wire it's not very strong but there's some sometimes you need that all right we have gone a couple of hundred feet about and uh, have found a use for these loppers already this is an orange tree uh, and this is I don't know how many I planted 20 or something around here but I would say half of them have done well and the others have not. But these are grafted olive trees and they are grafted to this bad boy right here. I want you to look at the thorns on there. You talk about a crown of thorns. This is probably what the Roman soldiers made to... Uh, I'm going to cut this off right here. And this will have to be carried somewhere where it won't get the... Uh... Okay, this, this tree has got bark guards on it. And you can see here where the uh, graft is. You see this knot right here? That's the knot where the, the spike rootstock is and see this is coming from underneath here so this has to be dealt with you don't want to scar the tree now i could let's say that the top part died and left this and you can't hardly kill these i could graft to this with one of my other orange trees and i'm going to put this back because the uh the rabbits sometimes come along here in the winter time and attack the bark on these trees and damage them all right moving on all right we are over here doing our rounds john and roger are over here hard at work at the sawmill uh i didn't tell you the weather it's a beautiful day kind of a cloudy sky 
and everything is good and everything is as it should be so they'll be out here it looks to me like these guys need to dig some sawdust out of there all right we're moving on, moving on. All right, we're moving along. John and John's come down here. He's he was cutting wood to work on the chicken houses with. He's using a a grinder to uh, to grind off staples, I believe. Staples that go through the through the wood and stapling the chicken wire to the inside. Tiger is really letting me know he's hungry, so we're going to get them some food here. It's kind of amazing that these animals can take dead grass and turn it into flesh and blood and bone. Like I said, we are at April the 2nd, 2024. We've got a beautiful day here in South Georgia. Now, I'm feeding these animals, and they are enjoying it very much. They take this uh, dry grass, which we would quickly die eating, and through the miracle of God's creation, these animals can turn it into life-giving meat that we humans can eat and hides that we can make shoes out of uh, just like I'm feeding these animals this morning I'm going to try to feed the sheep out there and I'm going to try to hunt the lost sheep now I want to remind you of what Jesus said to Nicodemus who came to him by night and said came to Jesus by night. He was a Pharisee. He was one of the ruling priestly class. And he wanted to find out what Jesus was all about. And Jesus told him, I tell you truly, you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. And Nicodemus could not understand that. He was not aware, even though he was an expert in the Bible that there were two dimensions the fleshly dimension which you're looking at with these cows that is flesh grass and blood and air but there's another dimension out there a spiritual dimension and i don't know about cows if they need to be born again probably not but we humans can be spiritually born into another dimension and in that dimension we are able to access the kingdom of heaven Jesus said unless you're born again you cannot see the kingdom of heaven all right how do you do it if anybody's out there and say okay you know that sounds pretty good let can I get born again too yes you can the way you get born again is you tell, you talk to Jesus in your heart, in your silence when you're laying on your bed or in somewhere where you're quiet and you say, Jesus, I want to be born again. I, I, 
I believe what you're saying, that there's another dimension. And I can see that this dimension here, this fleshly dimension, is not going to last forever. Would you cause me to be born again? Another way of saying that is, Jesus, would you save me? And then you will be born again. And you will actually be two different men or woman. You will be the old man or woman, the fleshly, but you will have another new created being. It's actually a created being. He creates you into this new dimension. And from that dimension, you can see the kingdom of heaven and you will eventually be able to go to the kingdom of heaven when you are separated from your fleshly body, also known as the old man or the animal man. That's what Jesus taught. You must be born again. I have an image that came to me this morning, and I'm going to try to relay that image to you, a way of thinking about it. Imagine your fleshly self as a ship on the high seas, as a wooden ship, back in the days of wooden ships. And it starts out when it's first built, a beautiful ship, painted, beautiful sails. But wooden ships don't last forever. A wooden ship that lasts 50 years is a long one. Very similar to human life. And it begins to rot. It begins to uh, leak. It begins to have to be worked on all the time. And it's eventually going to sink. That's all there is to it. But your new born-again self, imagine that as a sailing right alongside the old wooden ship, a beautiful ship made of impermeable material that will never rot and never sink and never go away. So these two ships then, once you're born again, they're actually sailing side by side. Now you, your born-again self, is riding on the new ship. But because you are still sailing side by side of the old wooden ship that's sinking, you still have a tendency to come off of the new ship and, and visit the old ship, you know. Especially when you get tired, especially when you get afraid. And so we do go back and forth um, from our new spiritual being and we're tempted to go back to the old ship every now and then maybe to start criticizing people uh there's some uh you know the saying yo ho ho and a bottle of rum well that's on the old ship and we tend to go back to that and begin to indulge our flesh more and more but as time goes by with the help of god we begin to spend more time on the new ship and eventually, when the time comes, when the old ship sinks beneath the waves, we should be securely on the new ship. And that's when we will go to the new dimension, to the dimension of heaven. That's the meaning of being born again. So imagine, I'd like you to close your eyes and imagine those two ships sailing side by side. The new ship the imperishable, the one that has the mind of Christ, the one that has the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And then imagine your other ship over there. It's not going to last forever. And no, we don't want to go to that old ship, but as long as we are in this fleshly old ship, we are going to occasionally visit the old ship but we're going to realize when we do it hey we're on a sinking ship let's get off of this thing and get over there on our new ship that's where we want to be all right that's my analogy about being born again today and uh we i'd like to say the lord's prayer uh with anybody out there that has a notion to do it with us our, our father, father who art Lord in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name, name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Keep it going.